And the reaction, the public reaction to his death has been stunning. 1.6 million people went online to try to get tickets for tomorrow's memorial service. Twitter, the server crashed. So many tweets the, the day of his death. And there's even talk that his former home, Neverland, may be turned into a permanent shrine like Elvis's Graceland. So how do we say goodbye to our pop icons? Every so often, it's something we want to do, even need to do as a community. Grieve together. The spontaneous crowds that gathered for Michael Jackson, the scene at Neverland, reminiscent of the public mourning in 1977 at Graceland for the original king. Elvis Presley dead at age 42. Thousands lining the streets of Memphis, Tennessee, hoping to see a glimpse as the pristine white hearse took Presley home for the final time. And John Lennon gunned down so violently at age 40. Thousands gather for candlelight vigils to celebrate the man who asked the world to imagine. imagine all the people. It becomes almost like a, uh, a substitute for a religious event in our secular society. Part of it's the shock of the unexpected, premature end of such brilliance. Think Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison, Bob Marley, Kurt Cobain. But their deaths usually represent something bigger, the end of an innocence or an era, in the case of singer Buddy Holly, who died in a plane crash in 1959. But something touched me deep inside. We were surprisingly grief-stricken at the loss of Diana, the world's princess, her casket adorned with a handwritten note that simply read, Mummy, her son's pain shared by the world. Some losses, of course, are of a different caliber altogether. The death of our most inspirational civil rights leader and our young charismatic president produced seismic public torrents of emotion. We have to distinguish between even the most famous entertainers and leaders like a uh, Kennedy or a Martin Luther King who uh, is, is murdered and really throws the whole uh, earth off of its axis. But it's notable that so often these vast communal outpourings are for musicians. It speaks to music's transformative power, its unique ability to get inside our souls and remain embedded there somehow. Decades later, a familiar refrain can pull out surprisingly powerful memories and emotion. When someone who's a musician dies, uh, you almost feel as though a part of your life is dying. That this period that you remember very vividly and can totally re-remember every time that music is played. Michael Jackson was an uncomfortable soul who left many questions, some serious about his personal life. But his music, sheer genius. And so we choose to gather and remember. We're also looking for comfort. If stars like these can be extinguished so unexpectedly, what does that say about our own mortality? The music died. For Good Morning America, Claire Shipman, ABC News, Washington.